Hello, trendsetters. Marcus Small here from thesmallman.com. Today I'm going to show you how you can filter multiple items in the same column just as you would like this by choosing items but programmatically. You'll do it with code, yeah? So we're going to create the code that does that and if you've been following the series, it's been getting a little bit more complex each time. So this is the way that you do it using Excel filter values, yeah? And I'll show you the process. So let's go into VBA, so Alt F11 to get in the back end. And then we want to create a subroutine. So we'll say sub, and then we'll create a filter for multi, yeah? Doesn't matter what you call it, it just needs to be relevant, yeah? So I need a couple of variables. So I'm going to dim RNG as a range. You'll notice that I do use the same variables over and over again. It's good idea to have a convention. And I'm going to dim AR as a variant. Nice. Okay, so we've got our two variables. I'm going to have a range, and then I'm going to have an array for my variant. And then I'm going to set the range equal to basically the current region. So A1.currentRegion. All right, good stuff. And then that is effectively, if we have a look at our data set, control shift eight, yeah, gets everything. If we look right to the bottom, it's all trapped. That's the current region, yeah? All right, so we'll go back into the back end, Alt F11, and then we'll say the array is equal to range, and then our data's in column O. So it's O, and then we'll say O2, we'll start in O2, and then we want to go to the bottom of column O, so square bracket O, 1, 0, 4, 8, 5, 7, 6, dot, end, and then Excel, come back up, there we go. So that's trapped the information that's in column O, and it allows it to grow. So we've got five items, and if we, it can shrink as well, we may only have two. Or we could have three, yeah? It just depends on how long that, that particular list is, yeah? And that will send that information, the audio cameras, cell phones, drones, and computers into our array, yeah? We can test that um, just by pressing F8. F8, F8, and in the locals window, if you can't see it, just go view locals window, uh, you'll see the values in the array. So the first one is audio, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Audios, cameras, cell phones, drones, and computers, yeah? Now, uh, if I just get that back up, uh, F5 or run, run, uh, what we want to do is we want to turn this array, which is two dimensions, see it has a row and a column, into a one-dimensional array. So it's just a row, yeah? So the way that we do that is we go, AR is equal to basically itself, but just transposed, yeah? So we say application dot transpose. What are we transposing? The AR itself, yeah? So we'll turn it on its head and basically take out the two dimensions and make it one. We can test that as well. So we'll press run, and then we'll press F8, and then this is where the rubber hits the road. We've got two dimensions, press F8, it, re it runs the code again, and it says, okay, now we're only one dimension. You see it's not a row and a column reference. So effectively, that's done what we need it to do. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, make that one dimensional reference start at zero. So we're gonna basically split join the array using a delimiter, and that delimiter is gonna be a comma. So we'll say AR is equal to, we'll say split, and then join, and then uh, what are we joining? We're joining AR, yeah? And then what is its delimiter? So we'll say uh, we want a comma, and it's in quotation marks. And then we'll close the bracket, comma, and I'm just going to copy 
that part, paste it there, yeah, because my keyboard's playing up a little bit, yeah? All right, good stuff. So that's capitalised what needs to capitalise. We can actually check the veracity of that particular line of code by just running through the code. So I'll press F5. It's come down to here, and now I'll use F8 to iterate line by line. So we can see our array's basically now one-dimensional, and now we need it to flick. So it's one dimensional starting at zero, yeah? Perfect, yeah, so that's great. So it's it's doing what we expect it to do. Now what we wanna do is now we wanna invoke the auto filter, yeah? So this is a bit different to previous auto filters. What we need to do is I've been using just a single column. If we're gonna use the Excel filter values, we've gotta filter all columns, yeah? So, um, we have to know the column number that we want to Excel filter the values by, and that's column 10, yeah? So we'll go back into Excel with that knowledge, and we'll say rng.autofilter, yeah? And then we need 10, because it's column J, and then comma, what's the criteria? Well, that's stored in AR, and then comma, and then it's Excel filter, V for values, yeah, Excel filter values. All right, good stuff. So we'll just minimize the screen a bit. Just give me a moment, that's good. That's much better. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just minimize this a little bit more and then we can see what's happening on the screen. I need to buy a bit more real estate. Okay, good stuff. So we know that it works up until that point. So I might just, speed run it down to this point with the F5. All right, so we've got down to the bottom of the range. And now what we wanna do is we wanna see this particular column filtered by these particular criteria, yeah? So we'll press F8. All right, good stuff. And look at this, audio, cameras, cell phones, drones, computers. Fantastic, which is this particular range. I'm not quite convinced. Let's take a couple out. Let's go, oh, we'll take two of those out and we should just be audio, cameras and cell phones. So I'll stop the procedure, run it again, and then press F8. And now we can have a look and see it's audios, cameras, cell phones, yeah? So it's doing exactly what we need it to do. Now all we have to do is what we've been doing throughout the series is just copy the data from one place to another. So um, the data's been filtered. So we'll just say rng.copy. Uh, actually, I've already got the headers on the other row, so I'll just offset. Offset by one row, yeah, and now I can copy. And then where do I want to put it? Well, the output sheet, its worksheet code name, as I've been running the series, is sheet two. Yeah, you can see it's sheet two dot output. You'll see that on the left, yeah? Actually, maybe I'll, I'll just make this a little larger so I can show it to you. So see that, sheet two? That's the worksheet code name. That's what you should always use when you're referring to sheets inside your code, yeah? All right, uh, sheet two, at dot and I want to put the data in cell A2, yeah? All right, good stuff. So uh, if we roll this code out, I'll just sort of put a breakpoint in there. Let's run the code up until that point. Oh, it's not much point putting it there because we can't see the relevant column. So we'll run it and then we'll use F8 to run through each of this data set. There's only three there. F8, and now we'll go and have a look to see the three criteria in the output sheet. We have a look in the output sheet. We go over to this guy here, audio, cameras, cell phones. What were the criteria? Audio, cameras, cell phones. So there we go. So, and you can put as many items as you like in that list. I mean, there's, no, there's only about 10 in this specific list in the filter sheet, but that should get the concept across yeah alrighty and there it is you can pick up the file to, to follow along on my website and um, so that's the procedure everyone I hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a lovely day oh all right all the best